guys, welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you've been following me for a while. Today I am going to start my videos on the deluxe resorts. Now if you haven't checked out my videos on the values and moderates, check those out if you're interested. Um, but now I'm going to work on the deluxe resorts. There are a lot of deluxe resorts and there are a lot of rooms in the deluxe resorts. So I decided to split them up so I don't have one super, super long video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Wilderness Lodge, Animal Kingdom Lodge, and the Polynesian Village Resort. So let's get started. Um, I have my notes here. So if I'm looking down, that's why. Um, now, unlike my other videos, I'm not going to give a price for every single room type just because th these videos would be super, super long. But I, well, you'll see what I did. Um, but when I do give a price, it is for um, one night from October 8th to October 9th. So I wanted to pick um, a time where it's not peak season you know, it's not like Christmas or anything like that. So it's not the most expensive time of the year. Um, and this is just for the hotel. No tickets, no dining, nothing like that. And um, it is for either two adults or two adults and one or two kids. Now, if you are adding more than two adults, there is a fee for each adult that you're adding up to most rooms will hold four adults. Um, but Again, two adults and two kids, I think, is pretty standard. So if you add, if you go from two adults to one kid, it doesn't change the price of the hotel room. Or even if you had a second kid, it doesn't add to the price of the hotel room. But if you had a third adult, then it does add to the price. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so Wilderness Lodge. This is one of my all-time favorite resorts in Disney World, if not my favorite. Um, the same goes for my husband. We absolutely love it there. I think something you really notice when you go in the deluxes is, is when you go in, especially their main buildings, some of them have main buildings, um, some of them are only one building. Um, Wilderness Lodge is just one building, but when you walk in, the smell is amazing. Um, the lobby is gorgeous, the music, it's it's amazing. You guys, really, I, I absolutely love it in case you couldn't tell. Um, let me take this off. Okay, so there are a bunch of room types. So you have a standard view room, which gives you views of a service area, rooftop, or parking. It has two queen beds. There is a nature view room, which would be trees, um, which has two queen beds or one king bed. So if you purchased a nature view room, you could request one king bed or two queens, whatever works for you, um, but you are not guaranteed one or the other. Um, then there's a nature view bunk bed room, which has one queen bed and one bunk bed. Um, there's a courtyard view room, which is two queens, um, a courtyard view room, which is a king. So if you purchased a courtyard view room king, you are guaranteed to have a king bed in that case. Um, and then a courtyard view bunk bed room, which is one queen and one bunk bed. So the courtyard is going to be overlooking um, like one of the pools and there's like some tables and chairs and things like that right outside the quick service restaurant. So that's what they call the courtyard. Um, so then there's club level. Now in all of the deluxe resorts have club level rooms. And if you decide to stay club level, it is significantly more expensive than if you don't stay club level. You get a lot more personalized concierge service. Um, so you have like the general concierge in the main lobby for the entire building. But then if you're staying club level, you have concierge for just the club level rooms. Um, and they can help you make dining reservations even ahead of time before you even get there they'll help you um they really are great it is they bend over backwards to help you you have food and snacks you have um a continental breakfast very nice continental breakfast you have um some light snacks throughout the day there's like appetizers or d'oeuvres in the evening around like five o'clock ish um and then at night they have desserts and you know like wine and beer and things like that it really is very fantastic. In order to get into the club level area, you have to scan your magic band um, depending on where you're going. So at the Wilderness Lodge, um, you there is like a gate that you have to scan your magic band in order to get into that area. So the club level rooms at Wilderness Lodge are a standard club level room, which is one queen and one bunk bed or two queens 
and then a deluxe room, which is two queens and one queen sleeper sofa. Sofa? Queen sleeper sofa. So those are all the room types at Wilderness Lodge. Now, I just put together a couple of prices for this one night. The standard room would be $421.88. Um, if you got a standard club level room, that would be $689.63. And if you got a deluxe club level room, it would be $915.75. And that's for one night. Okay, so what dining do they have? What dining do they have? What dining options do they have at Wilderness Lodge? So they have a quick service restaurant called Roaring Fork. Um, they have room service options. They have a bar called the Territory Lounge. They have a bar and grill, which is Geyser Point Bar and Grill, and that's relatively new. That's out kind of between the pool and Bay Lake. It's very nice. Um, my husband and I ate there the last time we stayed there. It was very, very nice. Um, Whispering Canyon is a table service restaurant right inside the main building. Well, it's only one building. Um, like in the main area, in the lobby. Um, it is extremely loud. So they're sarcastic when they say Whispering Canyon. It's, I mean, anybody can eat there, but I think it's really geared toward kids. Um, if you need ketchup, your entire table is supposed to yell, we need ketchup. And But recently, I will say, they did change the way um, they're doing things in that they have like a little sign you flip on your table. And if you want to participate in their shenanigans, then you have like the sign spacing. I think it says like, we want to play. Um, and if you don't and you just want it to be more like observing, then there's something else you can um, put on there. So then they kind of treat you more normally. Um, they have wooden, is it, what is that called? Is that a wooden horse? Like the horse head on the stick thing? They have those like races for kids and the kids are running around and um, it's, it's very loud, um, but a lot of fun for kids. And then lastly, Artist Point is located at Wilderness Lodge and they recently redid Artist Point. So now it's called Storybook Dining at Artist Point with Snow White. Um, I haven't had a chance to eat there yet, but in Artist Point is, was um, a signature restaurant. Read expensive, very nice. I mean, you could eat there with kids, that wasn't a problem, but it was a very nice restaurant. Now they redid it. So it's kind of a Snow White theme. It looks super, super cool. I really wanna eat there. It's very high on my list, um, but they have that as well. Pools and activities. So they have two pools, which um, one, well, they share the pools with the villas. So they have Copper Creek Springs Pool and the and Boulder Ridge Cove. Um, the pools are very, very nice. The pools at Wilderness Lodge are some of my favorites. Um, let's see here. They also have bike rentals, which we've done. You can um, get a bike from the lobby and, well, you check it out in the lobby. The bikes aren't sitting in the lobby. And then um, you can ride down the trail. There's a trail that connects Wilderness Lodge to Fort Wilderness, which we have done. Um, and go check out the horses and stuff there. It, that's kind of fun. Um, you can rent, they have motorized boat rentals, fishing, movies under the stars. Um, the trail I was talking about, that, that's a, we have jogged there more than biked um, around Fort Wilderness. They have campfire activities and you can watch the electrical water pageant from the resort as well. <clears throat> In terms of transportation, you can take a boat or a bus to the Magic Kingdom. They have a boat to the Contemporary. Um, you can walk to Fort Wilderness, like I mentioned, um, which that's where they have the hoop de doo musical review. So if you're going to that, you can walk there. Um, and everywhere else you have to take a bus. Parking at Deluxe's is $24 a night or valet is $33 a night. They do have laundry. Um, services available. You can do your own laundry. They have dry cleaning services if you want somebody to do your dry cleaning. They have a gift shop, the Wilderness Lodge Mercantile, which um, is a great gift shop. You can do some shopping there and that is also <clears throat> if you need to pick up merchandise, you can go there. Um, like if you're having it shipped from the parks. Now if whenever I stay club level, they've delivered it directly to my room, but they'll tell you where you're going to pick it up. If you're going to pick it up at your gift shop or if they're going to deliver it to your room. Um, they have a salon. So like manicures, pedicures, that kind of thing. They have salon by the springs and they have sturdy branches health, the sturdy branches health club, which is physically located in one of the villas, but um, you can use it if you're staying in the regular wilderness lodge part of the resort as well. <clears throat> okay. Moving on to animal kingdom lodge. So there are a lot of room types here. 
So let's see, there's standard view room, which has views of the rooftop or parking area. Now this is something I really wanted to specify. People assume based on like commercials and pictures they've seen that if you're staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge, you're gonna get animals to your room. You know, like you can see them from your room, whatever. That is not necessarily the case. Not all room types have that. You have to specifically book a Savannah view room if you want that. So the standard view room, which has two queen beds, has views of roof the rooftops or parking area. Um, pool view, obviously has a view of the pool, has two queens or one king. And again, you can request which type, but you're not guaranteed. Um, they have a standard view king, um, a pool view bunk bed. So one queen and one bunk bed. A savannah view has two queens. So you're gonna have a view of one of the savannas. So if you book a savannah view room, then you know you're going to get a view of one of the savannas. As far as where the animals are going to be, that's not guaranteed. I mean, they're free roaming, obviously, but you will have a view of one of the savannas. A savannah view king, in that case, you're guaranteed a king bed. Um, savannah view bunk bed, one queen and one bunk bed. And then they have their club level rooms. So in terms of their club level rooms, they have a savannah view club level room, which is two queens or one king. They have a one bedroom suite, which is two queens and one queen sleeper sofa. And that also has a view of, of one of the savannas. Um, a two bedroom suite, which is one king, two queens and one queen sleeper sofa. And then they have a standard view one bedroom suite, which is two queens and one queen sleeper sofa. So the difference when they are talking about um, a bedroom suite, if sometimes you'll notice they'll have <clears throat> like the same bedding makeup as a non-suite. And the difference is that there's a closed um, like bedroom door that closes the sleeping area off from the more like living space, living room area, which a lot of people prefer if they have little kids that are gonna nap. So dining at Animal Kingdom Lodge, they have a quick service, the Mara, um, bars, they have the Maji Pool Bar and the Uzima Springs Pool Bar. Um, they have Cape Town Lounge and Wine Bar, and they have Victoria Falls Lounge. Now for table service, they have Jiko, which is open for dinner. They have Boma, which is open for breakfast and dinner. And they have Sanaa, which is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And they also have room service. My husband and I have eaten at Sanaa. We went there for lunch one day after we had spent a morning at Animal Kingdom, and then we went to Animal Kingdom Lodge and had, had lunch at Sanaa. Um, something I did want to mention in terms of the rooms, I should have mentioned this before, but um, even if you do not have a view of one of, this, uh, one of the savannas for, from your room, everybody can view the animals from the back of the lobby. So in the back, you can go to the back of the lobby and have this like patio area where you can stand out there and you can see the animals. Um, when we were there for lunch, we did that. The zebras were super up close and I think they also had wildebeests, I think is what it was. Um, so you can do that as well. So just because you can't see the savanna from your room doesn't mean you're not gonna have an opportunity to view the animals at all if you're staying at that hotel. So some of the prices at Animal Kingdom Lodge, um, a standard room, is which again that's the views of the have has views of the rooftop or parking area is four hundred eighty eight dollars and twenty five cents per night. A savannah view room, which is super popular, um, is six hundred forty nine dollars and thirteen cents per night, and a savannah view club level room is seven hundred twelve dollars and thirteen cents per night. You should just be using these prices as a guideline. I just picked, you know, a random day in October because I knew it wasn't peak season. Um, but this is just to give you an idea of approximately how much these resorts cost. They have two pools. They have the Uzima Springs Pool and the Samawadi Springs Pool. In terms of activities, they have campfire activities. Um, they have a playground. They have movie movies under the stars. And I mentioned this in a previous video, but I should specify again in terms of the campfire activities. They have, like, you're able to purchase, um, like, a s'mores kit, and they have, you know, like, singing and stuff around a campfire, so it's a fun little activity. Um, you can participate for free if you don't want to purchase the s'mores activity, the s'mores activity, the, s'more, the s'mores kit, but if you want to roast marshmallows and things like that, then you have to purchase that. Um, transportation, they have bus transportation everywhere. That is your only option. That is a kind of the downfall of staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge, I would say, 
you cannot even walk to Animal Kingdom. So wherever you go, I mean, unless you're driving, of course, um, you need to take a bus. They do have childcare services there and you do not have to be staying at a particular resort to use their childcare services, but they do have those, they do have a childcare option. Um, they have laundry and dry cleaning like the others. Um, they have locker rentals near the Uzima Springs pool. I'm not exactly sure why they have locker rentals and not the others, but it is an option. Um, they have the Zahanadi Massage and Fitness Center and they have the Zawadi Marketplace, which is their gift shop. So that's where you could do some shopping and where your merchandise pickup would be if you're having sh things shipped to your hotel room. I'm going really fast. I'm trying to make this a shorter video. Okay, so the last hotel we're gonna talk about today is the Polynesian Village Resort. It was originally called the Polynesian Village Resort, then it was called the Polynesian, and now it's back to the Polynesian Village Resort. I don't know why. Um, it is on the monorail, so on the monorail loop. So it is connected to the Grand Fleury and the Contemporary, the Transportation and Ticket Center, and the Magic Kingdom. So you can get to any of those places by monorail, or you can walk to the Transportation and Ticket Center and get on the monorail that goes to Epcot. They have standard rooms, which have either two queens or one king bed and one day bed, which have views of um, gardens, monorail or parking area. They have a pool or marina view, which has two queen beds and one day bed. Um, and it's on the Seven Seas Lagoon. So when you're seeing water, you're seeing the Seven Seas Lagoon. Um, and then they have theme park view rooms, which have two queen beds and one day bed. Now they also have club level rooms. They have garden view club level rooms, which have two queen, ba bands, two queen beds and one day bed, um, which have views of the gardens or the quiet pool. Um, they have a lagoon view room, which like I said, would have views of the Seven Seas Lagoon, two queen beds and one day bed. They have a theme park view room. Again, these are all club level, um, which have two queen beds and one day bed. And then they have a one bedroom suite, which have two queens and one day bed and has views of the marina. And when I say gardens, the, the grounds of the Polynesian Village Resort are absolutely beautiful. It's not surprisingly like Polynesian themed. Um, so very similar to Hawaii if you've been there. Um, but yeah, think Polynesia, gorgeous plants everywhere. So views of the garden are very, very nice. So some of the prices at the Polynesian Village Resort. A standard view room, again, for this is for that one night in October, would be $597.38. A theme park view room, would be $853.88. So that's one that whenever people see that there's a theme park view room, that is a very popular choice. It is a lot more money though. Um, so a garden view club level room is $822.38. And then a theme park view club level room is $1,134 per night. So you might've noticed, and this kind of surprised me, that the Garden View Club level room was about $30 a night less than the Theme Park View. So that's how much you're paying for the Theme Park View room because the Club level, again, you're getting some food with that and you're getting alcoholic drinks and things like that in the concierge service. The only difference is you're not looking at Cinderella Castle. So it's crazy how much more you're paying just to look at the castle. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> Dining options at the Polynesian Village Resort. So they have um, quick service, and that's called Captain Cook's. Their bars, they have the Barefoot Pool Bar, Oasis Bar and Grill, Trader Sam's Tiki Terrace, Trader Sam's Grog Gatto. Uh, they have Tambu Lounge, the Great Ceremonial House. And then they have, uh, let's see, Kona Island, which has coffee, pastries, and sushi. It's kind of an odd combination. So in the morning, it'd be coffee and pastries, and then in the evening, it would be sushi. Kona Cafe is table service. Ohana, if you're reading any Disney planning websites, you'll hear about Ohana. It's very popular. Um, they have dinner, and then they have a character breakfast. Um, they have pineapple lanai, I think is how it's pronounced, um, because that's how you'd say it if you were in Hawaii. I don't think it's lanai, because that's a port. Um, pineapple lanai is 
where they have dull whips unless it is like a porch i don't know they have room service and then they have the spirit of aloha dinner show which is a luau their pools they have two pools they have the lava pool and the oasis pool um their other activities they have the movies under the stars uh, motorized boat rentals campfire activities fishing uh volleyball jogging trail which goes to the grand floridian um, the Senses Spa and Fitness Center, it's technically part of the Grand Floridian, but it's really more in between the Polynesian and Grand Floridian. Um, if you are staying at the Polynesian Village Resort, you are welcome to use that. You can view the electrical water pageant from the Polynesian when it comes by on the Seven Seas Lagoon. They have laundry and dry cleaning services. They have a gift shop called Boutique. And that is where you can do some shopping and have your merchandise pick up if you have things shipped to your hotel. Now, in terms of transportation, um, you can take a boat or the monorail to the Magic Kingdom. You cannot walk to the Magic Kingdom from the Polynesian Village Resort. If you want to go to Epcot, you can walk to the Transportation and Ticket Center and then take a monorail from there to Epcot. Everywhere else, you have to take a bus. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. It's kind of a bit drier of material. It's not super fun, but if you're planning a trip and you are trying to decide where you want to stay, it's important information. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next time. And if you want to stay up to date with everything um, that I'm talking about in my videos, be sure to click that subscribe button. Um, then you're not gonna miss a video. I'm gonna have more deluxe videos coming up. I have a video coming up about the best fast pass options for little kids, all kinds of stuff. So be sure you click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye.